I'm uh, Jim Ski, and I'm a professor of sustainable energy, actually at Imperial College in London. I spend most of my time being co-chair of one of the working groups of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, the working group that looks after mitigation or or, or reducing uh, emissions. I should say so I also have another role because I'm chairing Scotland's Just Transition Commission. I have been uh, looking at climate change for more than 30 years now. So it's actually a very familiar threat uh, to me. And if I had existential angst about it, I wouldn't be able to get up in the morning. So it's kind of become a drumbeat, uh, you know, around my professional life, something that, you, you know, that I am continually having, having to address. And what I would say is just over the last few years, the evidence on the impacts of climate change have just been going up. We're just becoming ever and ever more aware of the dire effects of, of, of climate, climate change on the planet. And what I always try to keep in mind is this isn't something we're helpless in front of. There are things that human beings can do to address the climate threat. Well, in my role as co-chair of one of the uh, working groups of the Intergovernmental Plan on Climate Change, it has been my role to help produce some of the reports that have you know, helped to drive action. And I think one of the best examples of that is probably, uh, you know, I was one of the co-authors, the, the leaders of the special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees uh, that came out three years ago which I, I would characterise as being one of the big prompts for the acceleration of action after the Paris Agreement. I would say also my work on the Scottish Just Transition Commission, the only way that we will be able to deal with climate change is if everybody feels they're a part of that action and they feel that there's a sense of justice and engagement with the process. I think it's, I mean, Scotland is probably one of the leading uh, small nations, uh, you know, globally in terms of climate action. Renewables energy has been a great success in Scotland. You know, it, it's kind of world, world leading in terms of the amount of electricity consumption covered by renewables. I would pick out one or two other areas. I think I would also pick out uh, you, you know, the successes in terms of the improving the energy efficiency in terms of social housing. And the final one, you know, which which I mentioned for a previous question was the, you know, the Scotland's leadership on just transition, which has attracted a huge, huge amount of attention uh, internationally. Well, Scotland is obviously, uh, you know, a small nation and our emissions are a small part of the overall uh, glo global total. But added together, uh, the emissions from lots of small nations really uh, make a difference. And so action is needed. So I think uh, the fact that, uh, you know, the First Minister has actually shown international leadership in bringing small nations together uh, to look at their com common interests in, in, in how, they, how they advance things. So I think, uh, you know, Scotland is really is making a contribution. Um, well, there's been a lot of attention from the scientific community uh, about uh, what we need to do in terms of reducing emissions or taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere over, all the, over the whole 21st century. But the clear evidence is that unless we take action in the short term, very immediately, uh, we're, going, we're going to lose the option of limiting warming to one and a half degrees or, or even two degrees. And that includes things like putting in you know, the, the right kinds of policy incentives, making sure that people have the skills and the training to be able to implement the measures, for example, in improving uh, the, the efficiency of our homes. And we also need to do some research and development and demonstration activity. So my, really my strong, strong message is, uh, it's not all about the long term and things in the distant future. We need to focus on things that can be done now and how to get action going. We, we constantly talk about the emissions reductions part of the Paris Agreement. 
There are two other big goals as well around finance and in enhancing uh, resilience. And actually, these three goals, reducing emissions, resilience, financial flows, are all part of a jigsaw puzzle and they all need to fit together because we will not get the cooperation of developing countries that we will, as developed countries, we won't have credibility unless we also put work into the financing and the resilience side of it.